This is the fourth lesson on the topic of algebraic expressions, functions, and iteration with me, Mr. Riley. In today's lesson, we'll be learning about iteration. Here are the stages to today's lesson. First of all, we'll use a calculator for the iterative process. Then we will look at rearranging the equation to form an iterative process. Do a trick or trash, followed by problem solving. Higher extension today, non-calculator iterative process questions. How can we find the value of the following? We have square root 1 plus square root of 1 plus, and that's going on forever. If we use a calculator, then we can get an approximate solution. So put four of those in and I get 1.598 out to four decimal places. How could we make this approximate solution more accurate? Let's see on the next slide. How could we make this approximate solution more accurate? Well, let's say I make x equal to all of that. This means I can replace all of that with x. And we get x equals square root of 1 plus x. We can now use iteration to get a more accurate value. We have that x is equal to the square root of 1 plus x. I can use this iterative formula. So I've got the nth plus 1 term. So the next term will be equal to the square root of 1 plus xn. So that's just telling me that the next term will be equal to whatever I put in plus 1 square root of all of it. We must start with an initial value of x1. We can use the iterative rule xn plus 1 equals square root of 1 plus xn to give us the next term, x2, then x3, and so on, until we get a solution to a required degree of accuracy. Using our scientific calculator correctly helps us to, get, to give a more accurate solution with greater efficiency. You will usually be given the initial starting value of x1. Use the iterative rule xn plus 1 is equal to square root of 1 plus xn to solve the equation x equals square root of 1 plus x to three decimal places. You are given that x1 equals 1. So that really tells us we are starting with 1. Start by pressing 1 equals into your calculator. The value is now stored in the memory. Now we can type in square root of 1 plus xn into the calculator, but we must replace xn with ands, like so. So this should be in your calculator. You should have square root of 1 plus ands. Press equal again to get the next term. So you should get 1.414. Now we started out with x1, so now we get that this 1.414 is x2, so we should write that down. Continue press the equal, and the display remains unchanged. So if you press it again, we should get 1.554, that's x3. And keep going away, keep going away, keep pressing it, keep pressing it, more, 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 more. And eventually you'll get it so it doesn't change. Once we're in that position, we're able to write down our answer to three decimal places, which in this case is 1.618. Now bringing in our um, what we had initially, we can see that's the iterative process. You have that square root of one plus the square root of one. Each time you press equals, essentially you're doing another one of those roots of one plus you keep on repeating that calculation. The more of them you do, the more accurate we get. Press pause and try the example questions. Then press play and I will answer the examples with you. Approximate solution to an equation is found by using the iterative formula. Xn plus one is equal to the square root of four Xn plus eight with X one equaling five. Write down the value of X two. We note that 
our x2 can be found using the formula essentially this is one more than that and we have that we have x1 so we have x2 is equal to the square root it's basically this is Lehman's term this this is the first term and we're trying to find the second term so four times we need to substitute in five plus eight and we do that fiddly equal sign there's a proper equal sign and then we've got square root of four times five plus eight and I've got five point two nine one and I can just write all the figures on that display there's no harm in everyone seeing what I've got part B find a solution accurate to four decimal places so I can either use that or if you wanted to start again just to make sure I'm not making any mistakes press 5 equals into my calculator so it's stored in the memory and what I can do now is use this but instead of X or 5 or anything else I'm going to press that ands key and we add on 8 so that ands key is quite crucial it's what makes this whole thing really possible so let's do that 5 equals square root 4 times ands plus 8 and keep on pressing away keep going keep pressing the equal sign press that equal sign okay that's enough now and we've got our calculator display so we've got 5.4641 and that's to four decimal places press pause and then complete the independent work then press play and I will reveal the answers. Press pause and try the example questions, then press play and I will answer the examples with you. An approximate solution to an equation is found by using the iterative formula un plus 1 is equal to un squared minus 4 all divided by 5 with un equaling 3 so the first term is 3 write down the value of u3 the third term I'm going to substitute this in we can see that this is one more than that so my u2 will be equal to my u1 value squared minus 4 divided by 5 so that u1 the value we've established is 3 so that's what I'm going to place in so we've got type that into our calculator although I do believe we can do it without because 3 squared is 9 9 minus 4 is 5 5 divided by 5 is 1 And now what I need to do is put that one back in. So our U3 value will be this one. Squared minus four, all divided by five. And we put that in again. And that will actually be not minus 0.6 if I think about it because 1 squared is 1 take away 4 is minus 3 and 3 fifths is 0.6 find a solution accurate to three decimal places 
So again, we can start if we just want to make sure we're not going to make any mistakes, pressing three equals into our calculator. And now I'm going to put in square root, square root. I'm going to put in um, ands all squared minus four divided by five. So we put that in to so ands squared minus four all over five. And we'll press away and we keep on going. And we want to just make sure that calculated display is staying the same. And we get minus 0 0.701 and that is to three decimal places. Press pause and then complete the independent work. Then press play and I will reveal the answers. We use the iterative rule xn plus 1 is equal to the square root of 1 plus xn to find the value of square root of 1 plus square root of 1 plus. How else could we have looked at this problem and what more can we learn from this? Well, we didn't necessarily have to have it arranged this way. So let's say I want to rearrange it. Opposite of square rooting is to square. So we've got x squared equals 1 plus x and what can I do now well let's take away that one so we've got x squared minus 1 is equal to x so those cancels out and let me write it this way x equals x squared minus 1 still the same equation but I'm just seeing, will I get to the same answer I got before, 1.618, if I rearrange it in a different way and if I start off with different values. So now my next term will be equal to the current term squared minus 1. Let's investigate this on the next slide. We're now going to investigate what happens with our new iterative process. So what I'd like you to do, please, is to draw out this table and we're going to look at substituting in for um, our starting value being 0 0.5 and then our starting value being two. So if you draw that out, then have a go. And after you've finished, please click the solution and we can discuss what we found. So looking at what's happening now, I can see that that first value of 0 0.5 minus 0 0.75 and what it's doing is it's not actually tending towards any answer. And what we're saying is that that answer is oscillating. And in my next example, where we start with two, it's just going absolutely, you know, up to 3,968 by my fifth term and that's just going off so that's what we call diverging so we have a oscillating sequence and a diverging sequence what we saw previously was a converging sequence and that's what we're going to look at on our next slide press pause and try the example questions then press play and i will answer the examples with you Rearrange x cubed minus x minus 17 equals 0 to give x equals the cubed root of x plus 17. Now we're going to have to rearrange, but I can use what I've been given to help me out. The x plus 17 looks remarkably like this minus x minus 17. 
So that's what I'm going to take over first. So opposite of minus 17 is plus 17. We get x cubed minus x equals 17. Opposite of minus x is to add x. I'll just pull it up there now. So you go for x cubed is equal to x plus 17. Opposite of square rooting is squaring and vice versa. So the opposite of to cubing is to cube root. So take the cube root here and the cube root over there. That cancels and this is going to give our answer. So x is equal to cubed root of x plus 17 and that's what we were asked for. Use the iterative formula xn plus 1 equals xn plus 17 to solve x to four decimal places starting with x1 equals 0. So compress x equals 0 sorry 0 equals into my calculator to get that stored in the memory and now I'm going to type that in like this into my calculator with the AND key. Now it's just good practice to put in a couple of values and to show that I know what my terms are doing. It's got square root ANDs plus 17. So I've got 4.123. That's to three decimal places. We're going to need four. So I'm not going to do anything to my calculator, let's put one on the end. There's x3, that's the next term. I've got 4.595 Five is rounded up to 6. Um, but we're going to keep on going now. Press equals, 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 equals. And we keep on going until our calculator display doesn't end, doesn't change. And we get 4.653 and 3. And that's what x is equal to. And that's to four decimal places. Press pause and then complete the independent work. Then press play and I will reveal the answers. or trash. Read the task below. Press pause and identify which of the three solutions is correct. Press play and I'll let you know if you're right. This is the plenary for today's lesson. Press pause and have a go at the task. Then press play and I'll do the task with you. So now you've had a chance to read through that, I'm just going to start off, we're going to put in 0.5 equals into our calculator. And what we'll be typing in is 4 minus ands squared, all divided by ands squared, let's put in a bracket, plus 1. So I put that in, press equals, I get 3. Do it again, minus a half, 3, minus a half. So this is clearly an oscillating sequence. Well done for completing today's main lesson. You are now ready to try the problem solving video and the higher extension video that go alongside this lesson.